Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Bentley Better Slope Stability Analysis with Plaxus LE, Slope Stability in Geometry. Before we begin, we did want to cover a few housekeeping items. At the bottom of your screen are multiple application widgets you can use. All these widgets are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around to get the most out of your desktop space. You can expand your slide area or maximize it to full screen by clicking on the arrows in the top right corner of the widget. If you have any questions during today's session, please submit them through the Q&A window. We will try to answer these during today's session. Please know we do capture all questions coming in. Additional help materials are available in the resource list, and we encourage you to download any resources or bookmark any links that you may find useful. For the best viewing experience, we do recommend using a wired internet connection and closing any programs or browser sessions running in the background that could cause issues. These webinars are bandwidth intensive, so closing any unnecessary browser tabs will help conserve your bandwidth. The webcast is being streamed through your computer, so there is no dial-in number. For the best audio quality, please make sure your computer speakers or headset are turned on and the volume is up so you can hear our presenters today. If your slides are behind or you're having any audio issues, try pushing F5 on your keyboard to refresh your page. There's also a help widget at the bottom of your screen to help with some other common technical issues. And lastly, an on-demand version of this webcast will be available approximately one day after today's session and can be accessed using the same link that you used to join us today. So Sean, I'll hand it over to you to kick us off. Thank you, Catherine. Welcome to this series of webinars hosted by the Geotechnical Society of Edmonton. The Geotechnical Society of Edmonton is a vibrant organization with an active and engaged membership comprising individuals in private consulting, academia, government, and industry. My name is Sean McKeown, and it is my privilege to serve as the president of the society for this year. We are grateful to the presenters from Bentley for providing us with this series of two two-hour webinars. These webinars are being recorded, and for those watching live, the second two-hour webinar will be held exactly a week from now. The recorded webinars will be made publicly available by Bentley, as Kevin has just told us. The subject of the webinar series is Better Slope Stability Analysis with Plaxis LE. This workshop provides a basic and practical overview of the Plaxis LE 3D software. Basic tutorials are presented, and the focus of the presentation is related to the creation of models for application in the mining industry. The specific topics we will learn about today are slope stability and geometry. We have two presenters today. They are Dr. Murray Fredland and Marina Trevisoli. Dr. Fredland received his training from the University of Saskatchewan and Texas A&M University and has published over 50 research papers on topics related to database design, finite element modeling, and unsaturated soil knowledge-based systems. In 1997, he started Soil Vision Systems Limited with a database software product called Soil Vision, which could be used to estimate unsaturated soil behavior. He has since directed the development of eight finite element software packages covering areas of groundwater flow, contaminant transport, geothermal analysis, airflow analysis, stress deformation, and slope stability. Dr. Fredland's more recent work has involved supervising the development of the 2D and 3D SV slope, slope stability software, and the SV designer conceptual modeling software. This work has continued with the expansion of 3D slope stability analysis into the areas of mining, such as the analysis of open pits, tailings dams, and power dams, and performing landslide risk analysis. The software has been applied to a wide range of high profile analyses, including Oroville Dam and the Fejal forensic analysis. Marina Trevisoli is a civil engineer with a Master of Science degree in geotechnical engineering. In the past few years, she has been involved in consulting projects related to slope stability and 2D and 3D numerical modeling. 
She has worked as a researcher in highway slopes, safety management, through probabilistic studies and geological and geotechnical monitoring for risk measurement and in studies related to dam safety at hydroelectric power plants. As an expert in geotechnical software, she has been working with the geotechnical analysis team for the past year and has been instrumental in creating awareness of the Soil Vision brand. Nowadays, she is a senior application engineer for Plaxis and LE in Bentley Systems, assisting their customers all around the world. So I welcome them and invite them to continue after I hand over to our moderator, Catherine Roblewski. And I now hand over to her. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Sean, for that great introduction. And I won't delay us anymore. So Murray and Marina, I'll hand it straight to you guys. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate the nice introduction there. And we're happy to be here today. And I'd like to thank Marina for helping with the presentation here today. Uh, an overview, and we'll give you an overview of the, the Bentley software here and uh, follow that by a Plaxis LE overview and talk about through some of the model creation steps and uh, the material models, loading supports, give you additional features, some of the key features of the software. And uh, then we'll, we'll perform a few demos of the software at the end of this. So in geotechnical uh, terms, this is an overview of Bentley's view of the world uh, with uh, revolving around digital twins. And the reason I like this is that it's an excellent view of how we do our analysis as engineers. I mean, there's a planning stage, there's a design stage, there's construction and operation. And Bentley champions the idea of digital twins, uh, where you really store a, a 3D or a 4D representation of your model in the cloud, ideally, and you access it for various parts of your <clears throat> workflow during the lifetime of your your asset. So in the planning stages, we can collect site information data. We can transfer that to the digital twin. Uh, then going on to design, we can look at the conceptual model and uh, start to build our concept in 3D of what the, what the model entails. And um, it's based on sound computation. We can run various scenarios to see what is uh, what possibilities are available in terms of analysis and design. Then when we, we move to construction, we can start modeling the construction stages that we build in, in that stage. Check that with the numerical model. Again, it's easier to replicate that with a digital tool. And then in operation, once we've settled into the operation phase, maybe there are several what-if scenarios where we want to run and all of this can be based off of a consistent three-dimensional realization of our, our site or our digital twin, which helps us greatly in analysis here. Um, so just an overview of Bentley Geotechnical Numerical Analysis. Our goal is to replicate reality and produce the world's most accurate and accessible geotech analysis solutions, backed by world-class geotechnical expertise to produce safer structures and environment for all. That's from Rail Carp, our VP of Design Engineering Analysis at Bentley, which I, I like that vision here. And so just to give you an overview of the Bentley Geotech offerings, on the right-hand side, we have Geotech Information Management, comprising GINT, Open Ground Cloud, and Kinetics, and with uh, the most recent efforts being to move boreholes up into the cloud solution with Open Ground. And then on the geotechnical analysis side of things, uh, we have Plaxis LE, which the LE stands for Limit Equilibrium Analysis, which is previously the SV Slope software. Uh, Plaxis 2D and 3D, the finite element analysis, and Plaxis Designer, the conceptual modeling software, which was formerly SV Designer. And so what I like about this offering is it gives a very comprehensive geotechnical offering through information management through to geotechnical analysis. And uh, just presenting this slide to show that we, I mean, updating the software and working with clients is an ongoing activity that we enjoy and uh, is used as uh, a method of fostering development in the software and 
uh, aiding and designing and, and filling the roadmap with features that are useful to consultants doing real world problems. So uh, traditionally we have approached numerical modeling as we just receive a profile view of the model from the AutoCAD department and we put the 2D profile into modeling software and we are able to just run a two-dimensional model. What I like about the integrated geotech workflow that we are supporting here at um, Bentley is that there, there are larger inputs into developing a, a more comprehensive 3D view of the site. Uh, that may start with your engineering geotech structure, such as microstation or open site. Um, you would have topography data uh, that may come in from LIDAR data or context capture in or INSAR satellite systems. Uh, the very detailed topography data can be collected with drones now. Then you have your borehole, your subsurface information that can be fed into the system and field data that is now able with uh, platforms like Sensimetrics to come in in real time and be brought into a three-dimensional conceptual view of your site. So really the workflow supported here is to bring your data into your conceptual view of your site, look at your data, understand where your data exists, where you have to do interpolation, and then perform either a 2D or 3D analysis based on the conceptual model design and uh, move that forward and that presents a very robust analysis workflow that represents all the different sources of data from that you can gather from the site. So to just give a little bit of a overview of Plaxis LE, Plaxis LE software is offered in 2D and 3D and is for performing deterministic and probabilistic analysis of the stability of soil or rock slopes. Uh, the factor safety, or the probability of unsatisfactory performance or reliability index can be calculated. Uh, the software is simple to use, but allows the analysis of very complex geometries. And it, uh, through a lot of work, has been uh, has support for reinforced slopes and external loadings is also available. It's also referenced as the continuation of Clara W software, which is originally developed uh, based on research by Professor Hunger in 1989. And as such, we provide an import from Clara, existing Clara models, uh, Clara W models. So what does the package entail? It's a blend of classic method of slices analysis with sophisticated new probabilistic analysis and advanced searching algorithms. So there's very advanced probabilistic methods along with we've designed it to be uh, allow for sophisticated analysis, but have a sleek and simple user interface to make it easy to use. And just as a note, it's very integrated 2D and 3D software, so the, the majority of the two-dimensional software features have been carried over to the 3D software. So the, the solution engine for the limit equilibrium 3D solution was developed by formerly the Soil Vision Systems team, now the Bentley team, and the engineers uh, developed a, a great team of engineers trained under Morgan Stern, Fredland Sr., that's my father, and Professor Yamagami in Japan. And uh, fortunately, Fredland Sr. provided insight and guidance as he did a lot of the original research work on 3D uh, limit equilibrium method, resulting in a solution engine that is robust and fast and all the 2D limit equilibrium methods have been switched over to and implemented in 3D, including Morgan Stern Price, GLE, Spencer, and others. And uh, the solution, as a side note, has also been parallelized so that uh, it offers a very extremely fast parallel solution and it will use as many processors as you have in your computer. So, and just to clarify what we're talking about in, in common industry now, there are three methods of doing slope stability analysis. On one side, you have the classic limit equilibrium methods of analysis consisting of uh, you know, Bishop, Morgan Stern Price, GLE, Spencers. And then you have on the finite element side, you have strength reduction technique, which is a newer method. 
and has been uh, gaining popularity in recent decades. So there is a middle ground between those two, which is called enhanced limit equilibrium, which is the Kalhawe method. And what it allows you to do is to pull in uh, a finite element stress analysis and use that stress analysis as the basis for your limit equilibrium calculations. And uh, so that's a nice, it's like a, a hybrid between the two methods and allows some interesting comparisons. Uh, we're gonna focus today primarily on the limit equilibrium side of things. And uh, in the future, we can focus on more on shear strength reduction. So in terms of analysis methods, really we have the vertical limit equilibrium method in 2D and 3D total or effective stress methods. In the software, you can also perform SARMA, non-vertical limit equilibrium method if you have more uh, a jointed rock system. And uh, that method is also available. You also have stress-based limit equilibrium methods of slices and the total stress Duncan three-stage rapid drawdown method that has been implemented in the software. So just to uh, go back in time a little bit, uh, most of you have probably re remember this from undergrad geotech, but here's all your methods uh, of analysis that can be performed. Basically, we're talking statics. So sum of forces vertical, sum of forces horizontal, and sum of moments. And uh, we won't go into the historical development, but early methods were either one or the other. They were either moment or force, and then methods like Morgenstern Price, GLE, and Spencer combined the two to summarize moment and force methods such that um, we, and, and generally are the most common methods used today in, in analysis. So we'll focus on those newer analysis methods. So doing a safety analysis in Plaxis finite element, you have the shear strength reduction method. So really what you're doing is you're, it's a deformation method you're reducing your strength parameters until failure is reached. And uh, then you reach failure when the model won't converge and your deformations become excessive is the methodology proposed there. So as such, here's the typical results from a Plaxis uh, finite element analysis where you can see you know, typically plotted deformations or, or shear stresses and you can see somewhat articulated the zone of failure in the model. And uh, so complex geometries can be modeled and it's a very effective tool in modeling stability analysis. In the 3D LEM method, you have columns, your slices go to columns and you can look at those in plan view, in front view, in profile view. And uh, really you, you can get a lot of information out of those, you can double click on any particular column, see all the information, and it's a very uh, straightforward method. Uh, it's based on theory, originally published by Hunger and Fredland in 1993, Hunger in 1987, and Cheng and Yip in 2007. There is one directional and two directional methods implemented that allows for the analysis in any direction and is a fast and rigorous mod uh, method in 3D. And uh, stability during rapid drawdown has also been implemented. This is a total stress method originally published by Duncan and Wright and uh, is a, uh, has been implemented both in 2D and 3D and is, is popular for levy analysis in the US. Uh, alternatively, you can also do a coupled uh, effective stress analysis importing pore water pressures in the software. So in terms of the user interface, Really, we're looking at uh, a variation of a boundary value problem. And the boundary value problem has three main aspects. You have geometry, materials, and boundary conditions. And uh, really here, the menu system is organized from a left to right to guide you through that process. You first enter your geometry, and there's a menu system there that gives you lots of options for entering your geometry in, in the CAD window. Then number two, you enter your material properties. And number three, you put on your, your loads, which may be external, such as line loads or distributed loads, or internal, such as supports, uh, anchors, tiebacks, geo, uh, geomembranes, those kinds of things. 
Um, one of the one of the benefits of the software has been its ability to allow the users to create 3D models quickly. When we were talking with a lot of early clients, what we realized is that they have different methodologies for building 3D models. There's not one methodology that suits for everybody uh, all the time. So as such, to adapt the software to the workflows utilized by clients, there's many different ways to create a three-dimensional model and they range from basically simple at the top with extrusions to more complex methods uh, that'll be that uh, Marina will show us later on today. So you can do a, a two, take any 2D model, you can extrude it out into 3D. You can build it with multiple cross sections. Uh, you can do what's called a layered cake of grids or meshes and stack them on top of each other. Uh, this method can also be used with material volume meshes and uh, you can pull in GIMP or open ground or kinetics boreholes and build them, uh, build the subsurface model using those that input data. You can also do a block model import um, for the mining applications. You can pull in uh, data, export it, import it from Plaxis and 2D. And we'll show you today a new method called profile spline blending, which is a new method of constructing your 3D model from a series of non-parallel profiles. So these methods are consistent with current 3D modeling practices. They allow easy creation of 3D models in a faster time period is the benefit to the end user. And just highlighting the geometry transfer, this shows it out of a slope S or a, a Plaxis LE 2D model into Plaxis and doing the finite element analysis to allow a transition between the two softwares. And uh, that's available in 2D as a powerful option. Uh, there's also a very comprehensive list of constitutive models that are implemented in, in Plaxis LE. There's over 30 and they roughly can be grouped by soils drained, uh, representing drained behavior, undrained behavior, uh, rock mechanics, or unsaturated soils. And that's on the slope stability side. On the groundwater flow side, you of course can pull data from the SV Soils database of over 40,000 soils or estimate unsaturated soil water characteristic curves to aid in unsaturated seepage modeling. In terms of support methods, there are grouted tiebacks and anchors, soil nails, micropiles, geotextiles that are all supported and all of these methods have been swept into three dimensions. So it's a powerful feature because really these anchors are point loads in 3D. I mean, we try to model them in 2D, but really it's an approximation that an anchor in a 2D model really becomes a steel plate in the model when you extrude it out in the third dimension. So uh, in representing them in 3D allows you to put a point load at a specific place and then you can adjust your anchor spacing in three dimensions in any direction and see how that affects your stability and try to minimize your anchors to achieve the factor of safety that you want to achieve in a particular scenario. So as well, just showing some, some Plaxis models done with shear strength reduction. The upper right one is 2.5D where we're stabilizing a slope with, with piles put in the ground and the deflection of the piles is able to be accounted for in the analysis, which is very helpful. And the lower left showing the, the uh, three dimension, full three-dimensional analysis using the shear strength reduction method in Plaxis. Uh, the same model shown in, in Plaxis LE, you can see you can drape the aerial shot or the map over top of the 3D model. We can put in all the pile locations at any pattern. And in, in this case, we can consider the groundwater as well. And we can do what's called a, a multi-plane analysis and sweep it across the face of the geometry and uh, do the analysis and get a spatial representation of what the critical slip surface might look like and where it is spatially in the model. And you can see that uh, this slip surface is not fully ellipsoidal. That's because it's been optimized in three dimensions 
and uh, it's trying to optimize and find the, the minimum slip, slip surface, critical slip surface, and that may not be a perfectly ellipsoidal type of shape. And so the searching method allows that. Uh, there's advanced searching methods in the software. Uh, one of the potential sources of variation in limit equilibrium analysis is, are you finding your critical slip surface? And that's a good question to ask. And uh, uh, to fully answer that, it's good to have an array of comprehensive slip surface searching methods available in the software. And there's search, uh, searching methods that, uh, that are really comprised for or focused on circular methods. And there's composite and non-circular methods as well. Uh, there's more manual type of techniques, such as grid of centers and tangent lines, and then more automated searches such as Greco or Cuckoo. And all of these methods can be optimized uh, once you find your critical slip surface to try to find a more optimal critical slip surface. So if we look at 3D, this table shows the extension of searching methods into 3D. So if we start on the left with uh, a circle or in 3D an ellipsoid, really you have the searching methods such as grid and tangent, entry and exit, all your searching methods. The next column shows whether they're automated or not. Uh, MPA means whether the, the searching method can be engaged with the MPA method or not, and then whether they're implemented in 2D or 3D. And then the nice thing about the software is that when you perform a searching method, you can augment it through wedges or weak surfaces or bedding planes. So in other words, the searching method will realize that uh, I might be cutting through a, a weak surface or a bedding plane in this searching scenario, and it adapts the search to find, uh, to see if we can find a more critical slip surface for that scenario. So, uh, and then on top of that, the, there's an optimization routine that can be engaged to further try to find a minimum slip surface. So that's approaching from a circular or ellipsoid. You can also have non-circular type of slip surfaces that can be modeled in the software. So this is just a nice example. I like this. This was an ex uh, a model of a bullnose slope uh, at the side of an open pit. And the problem was is that the factor of safety if you, if you modeled it in 2D was less than one. Yet they, they knew that was inaccurate because the slope was standing and uh, it's, it wasn't failing. So they asked that a three-dimensional model be created to more accurately provide a calculated factor of safety for the slope. And it was quite a complex slope geometrically, so it was, it was searched with uh, a, a wire mesh over the top and the geostrata being represented and imported in the model. There's about 12,000 trial slip surfaces and searching for the direction was one of the searches. So you can see the U-shaped graph in the lower left, and really the bottom of that U-shaped graph is the ideal slip direction. So you, your direction becomes a bit of a searching parameter that you have to determine either numerically or uh, just by brute force, so sweeping through the different directions in 3D. So in this case, the factor safety was about a 33% increase over 2D and uh, yielded results that were more closely replicated reality. So one of the big issues in doing slope stability analysis is spatially, how do we determine uh, the location of your critical slip surface in your model? Uh, this, this model of a tailing stem would typically be analyzed by a consultant by picking maybe between two and four critical cross sections through the structure and analyzing it for stability. The, the trouble with that methodology is that you never know if you've hit a, a crucial cross section or if you've missed one. Or what if you change the angle of one of your cross sections slightly? Does that change the factor safety? And if, if so, by how much? So the multiplane analysis method can be run in 2D on 3D models. So really what we're doing here is we're sweeping many different planes down the upstream and downstream side of this tailing stem and it's reporting to us a more comprehensive spatial view of our 2D factors of safety and how they vary across the structure. And it's very interesting to see the spatial variation in that 
and you can plot it and have a look at it and double click on any one of those models and any one of those models will bring up a full two-dimensional model of that particular slice. Alternatively, too, as well, you can run this in a three-dimensional method. So 3D multiplane analysis. You can sweep it around on the upper right. It shows an, an open pit and it gives you a very good spatial idea of where your factors of safety, uh, how they vary, where's the critical one. Uh, such a method can also be applied to along roads or along riverbanks as shown in the lower left here, where we're sweeping the method down a riverbank and determining the variation in the factor safety uh, spatially. And so a very useful method for bringing space into the analysis. So 2D, 3D unsaturated analysis can also be brought into the slope stability model. One of the most common triggers of stability events is water related and uh, change in pore water pressures particularly. So there can be a response from climatic rainfall and evaporative conditions. Uh, it's critical to uh, model the unsaturated zone in a lot of cases too. That can sometimes be a, a compelling piece to model. There's uh, a lot of constitutive models in the software for unsaturated shear strength behavior that mirror the input of pore water pressures from the groundwater model, and those can be brought into the analysis as well. So uh, there's also the ability to handle rock mechanics in the software. Uh, this was the result of a research program done many years ago, and uh, we can model weak surfaces with multiple planes or surfaces in the software. Anisotropy can be handled in uh, simple or complex ways, more complex ways, including the use of 3D bedding guides, which are shown in the, in the bottom model, where the, the, the weak structure can be interpolated in 3D off of the bedding guide, and uh, layers between the bedding guides can be interpolated. So what it does is it searches and it tries to find where it may follow a bedding guide in a weaker orientation along the slip surface. And uh, along with that are standard rock mechanics types of constitutive models such as Hook Brown, Barton Bandis, and the ALM models in the software. So at this time, uh, we'd like to go over a few demos, uh, particularly one of an embankment, an open pit and a tailing stem, and I will turn it over to Marina to bring us through that. Thank you, Murray. Reinforcement of embankments is one of the main applications in geotechnical modeling. For this demonstration, we'll take a look on an embankment model in 3D and also in 3D in order to see the changes in factor of safety regarding an unstabilized condition and a stabilized condition with pile. We see here this example it was built using cross sections in Plexus Designer, so three position cross sections along the space here. And it's composed by four surfaces. If we see here that we have a region limiting the, the model, we can also check using the 3D tools if we, if we have any pinch outs between the surfaces, especially the ones that are uh, close uh, to each other. So in this case, no pinch outs found, that's okay. And we see here that for this zone of the embankment, we are performing a multiplane analysis along each of these planes here. So if you take a look at the multiplane analysis tool, you see that for each of the planes, we are considering entry and exit and respecting a certain number of increments of the position increment, radius increment, and also the limits, the maximum and minimum limits of the aspect radio. Okay, so we perform individual analysis in each of these planes. Uh, they work will work separately, and then we will understand what is the critical factor of safety for this entire zone. Okay, you can see also here the material is being used under a drain and drain shear strength radio condition. And if you take a look at the results, this is the initial factor of safety that we are obtaining. So a really low value, 0.6 of factor of safety. 
and uh, if we change here also the factor of safety contours so contour levels to a maximum of uh, 1.5 we see that actually this entire zone would remain critical so how can we increase the factor of safety so if we come back to the input we can include supports in the model so i can come here on the top manager i already have my uh, supports already included so the the pile of shear strength i'll just switch you to this specific value force application as passive click ok ok and i just need to draw the piles uh, in the model how can i do this well i could include them as non-uniform support so bringing the the coordinates of the of the supports i can generate under a certain area of the model or i could also draw a polyline along uh, generate along the polyline uh, respecting a certain condition so support length I can adjust here 74 distance between support 24 feet and then I can draw the the supports here in the model so just for you so you can have an idea let me just draw the line so you see here that let's think on something in this zone here double click and i will generate another one so between this zone here and a last one i would include here so the position of the supports is up to the engineering judgment to decide but we also have some tools to refer to back analysis that can be used to assist on the understanding of the required uh, active and passive uh, force required for an horizontal support in order to achieve a certain factor of safety. So in this case, if I just change the opacity of the model, you can see that the supports are positioned in the model and we can rerun and verify what would be the, the increment in terms of the factor of safety. Besides including the supports in the model, there is another important aspect that we can adjust in the analysis. So if I select here the multiple analysis, you see that under search method, I included that each of the planes will also optimize the critical slip surface. What does it mean? When we select the optimization process in Plexus 3DLE or 2DLE, the slip surface shaped optimize function is, will be used to find a lower factor of safety starting from some initial slip surfaces. So this lower uh, critical, uh, this lower factor of safety may, may also lead to uh, an optical uh, non-circular shape that yields the low, lowest factor of safety. So the optimization algorithm iteratively manipulates the shape of this deep surface as well. We'll see the influence in the analysis too. So if we check the results, you see that we had an increase in the factor of safety. The critical one is now 1.8 so it would be considering a safe condition and we can also notice here that the shape of the sliding mass uh, based on the optimization process it's now avoiding the next line of piles and it should behave like that so it's limiting by this line of of uh, piles and not uh, the, the, the line next to it okay so what can we see here as well is that uh, from 1.8 to 4 and we see here even compared with the previous one which is uh, 0 0.8 I believe so 
we are entirely in a safe zone now considering this new design of the supports. Let's say we would like to evaluate the 2D factor of safe now coming from this 3D model. Well, there are different options. We could switch the 3D to the 2D MPA analysis and check each of the planes. Or we could also save the 3D model as a 2D slice and then define the slice orientation in the model. Well, this next step, we are going to double check one of the cross sections regarding to this model, referring to this specific one. And what we have right now with um, LE in 2D is a factor of safety close to 1. So we, we need to keep in mind that limit equilibrium analysis um, do not consider uh, deformations. We act as we act the, the forces acting along the columns are referred to the combination of forces and moments. Uh, besides that, uh, when handling limited equilibrium analysis and including piles, uh, the sh shear mechanism is the only one considering. So no reduction in pile strength is also used. Okay, so. Currently in practice, we tend to compare uh, limit equilibrium with shear strength reduction using affinity element modeling, which is the, in this case can uh, well consider the, the associated uh, deformation process and also the piles can be modeled model as elastic plastic and uh, we can consider in the, the pile response to fictitious deformations as well. Well, okay, uh, we have this factor of safety here. How could we include this same cross-section in Plexus 2D? Well, I have the project here related to Plexus 2D. In the software in Plexus 2D, we have an option under File, which is called Import Plexus 2D LE. Okay, so we activate the remote scripting server and then it's just a matter of bringing the cross-section from Plexus LE to Plexus uh, 2D. Okay, so in this case, if we double check the results, not including the piles here in the safe 10 analysis, we identified this similar uh, slide, shape of the sliding mass. We can also position both results, one next to the other, and have a better understanding of the entry and exit of the critical mass and also the referring shape. And for this case, the factor of safety is close to 1. For the case of finite element modeling, we graph here the sum MS, MSF plotted against the total deformation. The total deformation here, uh, there's no physical meaning. What is What matters here is just more the, the sum MSF. And we can see that it's reaching a factor of safety of 1.11. So similar results for both of them. And most important, similar shapes of the critical sliding mass. For this example, we have an open pit uh, with two layers positioned. So we are just considering one material here, which is the base ALM. Uh, and the planes are already positioned here for the NPA analysis. For this case, we are using as a material the anisotropic linear model. So it means that uh, you, when we use ALM, we can describe the shear strength of an isotropic rock mass in relation to the change of the angle of an isotropic. So in that sense, we have from 1 to 4, each of them has its own um, uh, input parameters required and complexity uh, regarding the, the use of each method. but what I want to mention for this specific model is that we can feed the model, not on, actually we, we can build the model not only with uh, layered cake, as layered cake, so we position uh, two surfaces representing one 
material layer, layer between each of them. But we can also build the model in Plexus 3 dle through the use of material volume meshes and also bedding guides. So uh, in order to represent here for you, I just wanted to briefly show that uh, in Plexus 3 dle we have some tools to import information, so the common ones referring to region, and 3D tools if we would like to adjust some of the overlaps between surfaces, if we would like to cut surfaces following a certain criteria, and even check for pinch outs. Okay? So pinch outs may lead to non-conversions of the analysis, and it's important to always verify, and the software will give you uh, an understanding of the possible pinch outs in the model. Okay, so under geometry, I mentioned that we can fit the model with bedding guides and material volume meshes. Bedding guides are constructed used to conventionally define a series of beddings of rock layer for a rock layer. So if we take a look here, I have five bedding guides in the model that they, are, they were sequently ordered when we imported them from Plexus Designer. And each of the bedding guides here are actually a mesh. Okay, so I'll just show them for you, show, show the few, as you can see. And when we use bedding guides, one of the advantages of using bedding guides, bedding guides besides uh, faults or wedges in the model, is that you can uh, create uh, an interpolation between each of the bedding guides. So each pair of bedding guide will be interpolated four times, ten times, and then uh, the resulting bedding guide, it can be from the interpolation or the original one, will of course influence in the mesh shape and we can take a look on this influence as well. Okay, so if we click here, Here you see the position of the bedding guides in the model. Okay, uh, this is the bedding guide is particularly useful for anisotropic linear models where the slip surface shape must be able to interact with the rock bending rock bendings. So in order to find an accurate factor of safety, so it's good to keep the the material layer layer of the model as ALM. Okay, so besides the including the bedding guides, as we can see here. We can also import material volume meshes. So MVMs, as we called, uh, are 3D geomet geometry objects that define a volume of material that will overwrite the material defined uh, by region and surface blocks. So it will overwrite the, the base ALM model. Okay, so if you go under geometry, material volume meshes, we have the ones that we imported already from Plexus Designer, and we can associate a material with each of them. So I've created a hawk brown material that it refers to the big D VA. I'll just refer to the correct naming, and I can define which of them will uh, actually be applied in the analysis, and then of course select the ones. I would like to uh, see. As you can see here, they are located in the model. Okay, can come back here uh, and change the opacity. I noticed that. Let's increase the, the visibility of the material volume meshes. As you can see, if we change to XZ view, maybe more in the middle of the model, this is what we see, okay? So why is it uh, good to have the possibility of importing material volume meshes in Plexus 3 dle uh, Think in terms of a layered cake, so between two surfaces, a, a, a material. How would you represent this condition in the model? It's quite challenging, actually. So if, if you have volume meshes from uh, from your geological modeling, you can bring them in Plexus 3 dle Okay, uh, they will influence in the mass shape, but they will respect the region limit of the model, and they will also respect the top surface of the model. So no worries about this volume materials here that that are over overlapping the 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 the, the, the region block. Okay, they will respect the top surface here, the top surface which refers to surface 2, 
okay? So you don't need to cut and make anything here in this case. Well, I can just run my analysis and if we take a look on the results, you see here uh, that uh, we, uh, with MPA we can obtain several planes with different uh, results. In that sense, I will just deselect the bedding guys to easily see the critical sliding mass. So we see some uh, slope general slope formation regarding the critical mass uh, as the slip direction angle, the factor of safety. Uh, what can we also see? Well, uh, in terms of column base information, we can also take a look on the shear resistance mobilize. friction angle you see here that we have the uh, the influence of the material volume mesh in this specific critical mass and uh, if we take a look here in the color of our factor of safety contour map we could also adjust here the level so a minimum level of 8 1.8 and a maximum level of 4 so we can then identify the, what would be the critical zones uh, by changing the contours of our map. Okay, so uh, another important aspect is that, well, you can all, of course see all the valid slip surfaces, but you can also come here and there is slip surface extended and Plexus 3D LE will generate a CSV file for you, okay? And this CSV file interacts with your model, okay? So, as you can see here, based on the lines I click, I will see which slip surface refer to the analysis. So let's say uh, less than two. Okay. So we have here just this one referring to less than two. Uh, I could define search the for the ones that are under a certain max depth, a certain volume and then use it as a reference to identify the critical mass in the model. Okay, it's a good way to interact with the output results. To finish up our example, I will take another uh, plane here that is not referring to the critical factor of safety. Let's say this one of 2.9. So I can double click the plane and open the model referring to this specific plane. So we'll open the children model that is coming from the parent one. Okay, so they are all under the same directory. Here I can see the sliding mass, of course, we defined some uh, conversion setting and some depth that originate the size of the critical mass. But let's say I want, this, I want to see the influence of the bedding guide. So let me see all of them again and the interpolated beddings uh, as well. Okay, I can click on SD and what we can see here is that if we take a look at our model, the factor of safety, the critical sliding mass has actually is actually overlying under a certain part. So referring to actually the interpolated mesh here of the bedding between these two zones. And it's actually dictating the shape of the sliding mass. Okay, so here we can see the influence of using body guides to uh, adjust uh, an ellipsoidal to a non-ellipsoidal shape of our critical mass. This example regarding Plexus 3 DLE is showing a realistic case of a tailings dam in South America. The idea of this model, you see here that it's composed by sand, tailings, the dam, foundation and drains, is to obtain 
the factor of safety close to this area here, this selected area, upstream to the, to the dam. If we take a look at the XC, XYV, we see that internally to the, to the dam and uh, here internally to the, the sand material, we have some thin layers regarding the tailings and regarding the drains also. So if we navigate through the model, you see also the changes here of this blue dashed line regarding the position of the water table. So for this specific model, uh, I would like to show you two components. Uh, we have here the, all the surfaces imported in this case, but one important aspect of this analysis is regarding the settings. So we are performing a multiplane orientations, and why is that? Because in 3D modeling, we are not we are not uh, limit to left to right or right to left analysis. So parallel to the x direction. Uh, in that case, we can have different orientations of the the search plane. Okay, and in that sense, we can use the multiplane analysis for that. If we see here the orientation plan, you see that it was positioned exactly at this blue arrow here, and it will respect this specific direction here. We could also apply the critical slip direction. So there are two methods available in the software, the Gauss and the brute force method, which means that by using Gauss method, it will automatically search for the critical angle. Or if you have used the brute force, you need to add certain uh, range of different angles in order to locate the, the slip direction. We just keep here the Gauss method if we are not we are unsure on the possible uh, angle. And besides that, in terms of conversions, you can decrease or increase the numbers of rows and slices, it would all depend on how you advance with your analysis and the changes that you see in the factor of safety just by adjusting the conversions op set op options. Okay, so we'll click OK. And uh, another fact here, especially ha handling tailings them, is that uh, we tend to adjust the, the piezometric level from times to times uh, because of the changes in readings and uh, we want to see especially uh, the, the, the critical water table position and how it will affect a certain part of the model. Well, in this model we have located a water table as you see here in blue and uh, in terms of the materials pr properties we see here that we actually have more coulomb and also undrained strength radio. Why am I using the sand and tailings and drain? Because in the software I can dictate here that for this specific material, so for the sand, that is actually a more coulomb one, is a drain material, I can say to the software, well, above the water surface, and it doesn't matter uh, when I change the water surface, uh, use a different strength. So use a different constitutive model. So you have this flexibility in the software to adjust the constitutive model depending on the position of the water level instead of having the, to adjust uh, the limits of a certain material below or above it. Okay, I'm doing the same for the tailings. And you can run the calculation here in order to check the initial results. In terms of the output results, this is what we can initially obtain with the software. So we see here the critical sliding mass located at the top and the, the correlated column, columns included in the model based on the column res resolution chosen. So we also see here the slope information and the slip directional angle, the critical directional angle of minus 40 degrees. Besides this, we see here the plotting of materials that are influencing the most in the critical sliding mass. So we have the sand and the tailings. 
If we take a look here in terms of surface display, I may switch to materials. And in terms of slips, I can change the column base information. So in that sense, I can change and see the influence of the pore water pressure inside the sliding mass. We can also check uh, the friction angle, the diagram of the friction angle, the equation, and also the shear resistance mobilized in the sliding mass. Okay. One important aspect is also the possibility of exploding the sliding mass. So we can see here the shape of the sliding mass. And also in SD, here under view, I can check the information about each of the columns in respect to all the variables acting in the column as well. So we saw this initial example. But an additional analysis that can be performed in the software is that Plexus 3 DLE not only offers the calculation method, the analysis method, as two-directional method, I was using the two-direction, but also the one-directional method, which is more simplistic and uh, decreases the, the calculation time. So the one-direction is considered the sliding direction, and in the two direction, it's a sliding direction in transverse direction. Okay, so the possibilities here is just switching from one, two to one, or one to two, and then also take a look on the changes in terms of the sliding mass and the factor of safety. We see that with the two direction method, we can we decrease a bit uh, the factor of safety associated, maintaining uh, a close uh, shapes in terms of the sliding mass as well. Okay. So the column resolution here, the the column base information, you can also check and compare results in terms of the changes of the shear resistance mobilized of the, f the two and the one, and the normal forces as well. Besides 3D analysis located in global 3D analysis in Plexis LE, we can also check the 2D factor of safety in a 3D model. So we can be used here under settings, the option called multiplane analysis, by enabling the two-dimensional analysis. It's actually pretty fast to adjust the, the, the plane. So basically, MPA is used when you don't know exactly the location of the critical region. And we can use this, this as a, a tool to assist us on locating the critical region. Uh, in this case here, we'll just draw a polyline, but I could just pick an elevation as well of where I'd like to have my centroid located in order to adjust the planes. In that way, we will adjust the limits of the crease in two of the planes, so 200. And also the search method, I will use, be using slope search. And it's just a matter of running the analysis and checking the results. To speed up our presentation, you see here all planes solved, and uh, they, the, so, the software was running all of them in parallel, actu actually 16 at a time, and it took us about not more than two minutes. Let's check the results. We can see here the planes and the factor of safety related to each of them. We can also adjust the factor of safety contour related to the 2D planes by decreasing the range, the level value range, and see the changes here in color referring to potential critical areas. Uh, other thing that we can do is, for example, select a plane and also extrude the plane, in this case all of once, 
and see the shape of the critical mass. They are pretty close to the depth is not that much. And we can also double click the plane and let's say you'd like to just run a 2D analysis and make the proper adjustments in the 2D interface. Uh, as 3D and 2D cor are correlated, we can just open the model and work on the results or come back here to Plexus 2D LE and make any other proper adjustments in terms of the search method, etc.